My BF is great, but the relationship is hard. They say love is a battlefield, but in my case, it's a comedy of errors minus the laugh track, and half the time, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to laugh or cry. And yet, here I am, sitting in my car, staring at the apartment building my boyfriend, Mike, and I share, wondering if I'm about to walk into another fight. Or worse, an awkward silence. It's not that I don't love Mike. I do. He's funny, and when he remembers to, he's sweet in that clumsy, scatterbrained way that I initially fell for. He's the kind of guy who would spend an hour trying to fix my coffee machine only to realize he never plugged it in. But recently, the little things the things I used to find endearing have turned into sources of frustration, every misstep adding weight to the cracks between us. Sometimes it's the laundry he never remembers to fold, or the thousandth time he forgot to call me when he was running late. And yet, even I can't explain why it all bothers me as much as it does. Tonight, the crack is more than visible it feels like a chasm. We're supposed to be going to his best friend's party, and while I've been getting ready, he's been, well, I have no idea what he's been doing. I look up at the window, expecting to see the light on in the kitchen, but it's dark. Just like that, my annoyance simmers back to the surface, and I steal myself for the conversation I know we're going to have. The door is unlocked when I get upstairs, and I step into a darkened living room. I flick on the light, half expecting Mike to leap out with some ridiculous excuse, but the room is empty. I toss my purse on the couch and check my phone. No messages. My shoulders slump. I'm about to start a mental tirade when I hear the bedroom door open. Hey! He calls out, stepping into the light with a crooked, lopsided grin. His hair is messy, and he's in a t-shirt that probably should have been replaced three years ago. Seriously, Mike? You forgot the party again? He gives me a sheepish look, scratching the back of his head. I, ah, uh, I got distracted. You were supposed to be ready an hour ago. I huff, flopping down onto the couch. It's like you don't care at all. He comes over, sinking into the couch next to me with that soft sigh that usually accompanies his attempts at appeasement. I do care, I swear. I just, I thought I'd make dinner first so we could eat before going out. A hint of guilt seeps into my frustration. He doesn't even cook that often maybe he thought he was doing something nice, a surprise, even if it was one that clearly spiraled out of control. And in that moment, as much as I want to stay angry, the absurdity of it all makes me want to laugh. He's here, bumbling and clueless, and maybe I'm just exhausted from caring too much. I glance sideways at him, trying not to smile. Did you burn it? I ask, eyebrow raised. His cheeks flush, and he rubs his neck. Only the vegetables. The pastas? Well, it's al dente. Maybe too al dente. Against my better judgment, I snort, the laugh bubbling out of me, half in amusement, half in defeat. You know, if I didn't know you better, I'd swear you were just trying to ruin our plans. He grins, catching the change in my tone. I would never. Ruining plans takes careful, premeditated effort. My way is far more spontaneous. I let out a breath, my annoyance deflating. And that's the thing about Mike just when I'm ready to throw in the towel, he finds a way to make me laugh, to break the tension, but I know humor is only a band-aid, and I'm not ready to sweep everything under the rug again. You don't realize how often this happens, do you? I ask, softer this time, ice fixed on the carpet. I know I can be, forgetful, he replies, looking guilty, but I swear, it's not on purpose. I just get caught up in things, and then suddenly I'm messing up the timing or, forgetting stuff. It's not about you. It's not about you. I've heard it before. And yet, somehow, I can't help but feel like I'm at the center of it all, like each time he slips up, it's a little reminder that I'm not as important as I want to be. I wonder, briefly, if I'll ever stop feeling this way, if there's a way to love him without taking every little mistake to heart. But I don't know how. The next morning, I sit at our small kitchen table, scrolling aimlessly on my phone and nursing a mug of coffee. Mike's already gone for work, and as I look at the quiet, empty space around me, a question creeps up, one I'm too afraid to answer. I wonder if love is supposed to be this exhausting. My best friend calls in the middle of my inner monologue, breaking through the silence. I hesitate but pick up, holding the phone close to my ear. Hey, Liz, I greet her, trying to keep my tone light. Hey yourself, how was last night's party? I sigh. We never made it. Mike, forgot. Again? It's like he has a whole other timeline in his head, one that never includes me, I joke, but it's a weak attempt, and she sees right through it. She doesn't laugh. Soph, maybe it's time to talk to him about all this. I look down at my coffee, feeling a familiar, gnawing ache in my chest. I have tried talking. We talk, he says he'll try, but it's like he's caught in a cycle, and every time he breaks a promise or forgets something, it just, adds up. Liz pauses. Sophie, love is hard. 
but it's not supposed to feel like a weight you carry on your own. There's got to be more to it than this. And she's right. Somewhere in me, I know it. There's supposed to be a warmth, a connection that goes beyond laughter and small acts of affection. But there's a part of me that's terrified, too. What if it's me? What if I'm asking for too much? A few days later, we find ourselves in yet another argument, this one ignited by something as trivial as laundry, but somehow it feels like all the unspoken things are coming out at once. The room is filled with words my voice, loud and accusing his, frustrated and defensive. The walls seem to echo back everything we're saying, making it sound even worse. Then suddenly, he stops, his shoulders slumping as he sits down on the bed. He looks at me with an expression I can't quite place somewhere between hurt and exhaustion. And maybe for the first time, I see it he's struggling, too. I thought I was the only one burdened by our issues, but he's carrying a weight of his own. I don't know why I mess things up, he says, voice barely above a whisper. It's like I want to be perfect for you, but I just, keep failing. His words hit me harder than I expected. It's not about me being forgotten or unloved. It's about him not feeling good enough, about both of us trying to live up to impossible expectations. And suddenly, I see that we're both trapped in the same pattern, both of us too scared to admit our own insecurities. I sit down beside him, my anger dissolving into something softer, something closer to understanding. Mike, I never wanted you to be perfect. I just wanted you to try. He looks up, his eyes searching mine. I am trying. I just, don't always know how. For the first time, we talk not about who's right or wrong, but about the way we feel, the things we're afraid to admit even to ourselves. He tells me about his insecurities, about feeling like he can't ever measure up. And I tell him about the loneliness I've felt, the doubts I've carried about whether I'm asking too much. We talk for hours, and by the time the sun starts to set, something between us has shifted. It's not a perfect fix, and I know we'll still have fights, still hit those same bumps in the road. But there's a new understanding, a mutual acknowledgement that maybe we don't have to be perfect for each other. We just have to be honest. Weeks pass, and things slowly improve. It's not as if Mike suddenly remembers every date or miraculously learns to do the laundry, but when he forgets, he laughs and apologizes, and somehow, it's easier to forgive. And I find myself letting go of the little things, focusing instead on what he brings to my life that no one else could. In the end, love isn't about two people fitting together perfectly. It's about the decision to grow together, to look past the flaws and see the person underneath, the one who's trying just as hard as you are. And in our messy, imperfect way, we're making it work. For the first time, I feel hopeful. And maybe that's all I need.